morning, they were killed when a bomb exploded near their Humvee. It happened over the weekend in Baghdad. The soldiers were with the 48th Infantry Brigade. That's the biggest combat unit deployed out of Georgia since World War II. It's also made up of soldiers from several states across the U.S., including Alabama. The military isn't releasing the soldiers' names or where they're from until family members are notified. The countdown is on for Saddam Hussein's war crimes trial. Iraqi officials say the ousted leader could go to court in early October. And folks across the Arab world will get a front row seat to the proceedings. That's because the trial will be telecast throughout the Arab world. Iraq's security advisor says the trial will not be political. They say Hussein will be banned from giving speeches. The official says the trial should be underway before October 15th. That's the day that Iraqis are scheduled to vote on their new constitution. The people of Saudi Arabia are mourning the loss of their ruler this morning. King Fahd died earlier this morning. The 84-year-old monarch had been in and out of the hospital in recent months, most recently suffering from pneumonia-like symptoms. Fahd had a strong but controversial relationship with the Bush administration. 15 of the 19 9-11 hijackers were Saudis. Many in the administration blame the kingdom's Wahhabi school of Islam for fueling terrorism. In the meantime, the king's brother, Abdullah, has been appointed the country's new king. Today, crews will continue digging at a landfill in Aruba. They are searching for clues in the Natalie Holloway case. A potential witness claims he saw some men dump and cover a female body. He says it happened just days after Natalie disappeared. Meantime, after two months of searching in Aruba, Natalie's mother is back in Alabama this morning. Beth Holloway Twitty left the island yesterday, and according to a relative, Twitty plans to return to the island soon to keep the investigation alive. Eric? All right, Sarah, thank you very much for those news updates at 7-Eleven on this Monday morning. Now, you may be working on your child's back-to-school checklist this morning. However, there's one important part that you may be leaving out. Also, the first day of school is coming sooner than most for some local kids. That's despite damage from Hurricane Dennis. We'll have that story later in our news. And the current time is 7-11, the first day of August, a Monday. Let's check out our Fox 10 News Storm Tracker radar. You can see right around Pensacola, a few light rain showers. Also some rain over towards Destin. All that activity is hugging the coastline along the Florida Panhandle. Looking okay in Mobile right now. We'll have a full look at this and your forecast coming up on Fox 10 News. Okay, the time now, 714. You're watching Fox 10 News. I'm meteorologist Jason Smith, and here's what's happening with our temperatures outside this morning across the Gulf Coast. Not too uncomfortable out there at this hour. We're at 74 degrees in Mobile at Mobile Regional Airport, 78 at Brooklyn Field, and 76 in Pensacola. Moving forward with your Fox 10 News storm tracker radar, you can see Citronelle and Mobile looking at those rain showers up necessarily a problem here in Mobile County or Baldwin County. Things are pretty clear. But as we move over towards the Florida Panhandle, that's where we've seen a little bit of light rain this morning. It's coming down a little bit more heavily right along the immediate coastline over towards Gulf Shores and Destin. And this will be a trend that should continue through most of the morning hours. Most of the activity right along the beaches south of Interstate 10. Watch out along Highway 98 right around the Pensacola Bay Bridge. A persistent shower here. Also some persistent showers over towards Perdido Key. More numerous and wide spread just offshore and then tracking along Santa Rosa Island and Santa Rosa Sound. You can see some showers at Navarre Beach and again Fort Walton Beach and Destin seeing the rain and that extends over towards Destin and even around Sand Destin this morning with lots of thunderstorms over east of Destin over towards Sand Destin in Walton County seeing those thunderstorms uh, just on the southern edges of Choctawhatchee Bay and out off into the Gulf. Your radar satellite picture shows the picture tells the tale. It's the same deal we saw over the weekend, a stationary frontal boundary parked over parts of Georgia and Florida, and this frontal boundary has been in place over the weekend, giving us numerous showers and thunderstorms. Well, we're going to see that as the focus again today, but gradually the stationary front will move to the south and wash out. It'll fizzle out and become less and less of a player in our forecast over the next couple of days, but I stress the uh, word gradual here. We're still going to deal with it today and tomorrow for sure. Coastal thunderstorms this morning. Temperatures around 84 degrees by 10 o'clock. Most of the rain, uh, Highway 98 southward. You see some isolated showers in the inland areas, but most of the rain will hold off until later today. Thunderstorms are becoming likely this afternoon all throughout the area. Rain chance at 60%, a high of 90 degrees with south winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. 
tonight, isolated rain showers, temperatures in the 70s with light southerly winds. Our seven-day outlook, and it's going to go ahead and look at the seven-day planner here on this Monday so you can get an idea of what's happening the rest of the week. And no big changes in there. Mostly we'll see the, the most significant thing would be the decrease in the rain chances Wednesday and Thursday. That will really hold on in, through Friday and Saturday. We'll see some showers each afternoon, but rain chances dropping off a bit as high pressure moves in. Daytime highs will be actually below average by a couple of degrees. Our typical high for this time of the year is 92 and will be down near the 90 degree range today and tomorrow with that extra rain around. Overnight lows in the mid 70s all the way across the board through Sunday. All right, thanks a lot, Jason. We uh, can plan for this by taking our umbrella and just being yeah. ready for some wet yeah, weather. A nice way to start Arkansas off. Yeah, not yeah. bad at all. Well, along with paper, pens, and folders, officials in Mobile County want something else included in a child's back-to-school list. How about a health checkup? We'll tell you what tests they recommend. And one tourist hotspot is getting a big makeover. That's after a pummeling from Hurricane Dennis. We'll tell you when to expect the new and improved Navarre Beach. It's now 717 on your Monday morning. If you're heading out at 730, you've got about uh, 13 minutes. And here's a live look at what's happening high above us here at the uh, International Space Station. To get an idea of some of the things they're looking at and decisions that have to be made today. More news in two minutes. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching Fox and News on this Monday morning. It's now 719. I'm Eric Reynolds. And I'm Sarah Wall. Let's get the latest on our traffic conditions outside this Monday morning. Let's check in now with WABB's Cherish Lombard. Good morning, Cherish. Good morning again, Sarah. Eric, right now we're taking a live look at the Bayway traffic moving there very smoothly. Still trying to get that accident cleared up in Daphne, Highway 98, and Whispering Pines Road. Be careful there. That's your traffic. I'm Tara Schlumbard from WABB for Fox 10 News. All right, thanks very much, Cherish. It's now 720. The Mobile County Health Department wants you to put your child's health at the top of your back-to-school list. That's why they're offering health checklists. Here are a few items on the list. The health department recommends your child get a medical checkup every year. Also, make sure your children have all their required immunizations. Two more important tests are vision and hearing. These should be updated every year. Dental exams are also important. And lastly, make sure your child's emergency phone number Numbers and health insurance information are updated. Summer vacation is already over for some local kids. Today it's back to school for students in Santa Rosa County, Florida. That's even though Hurricane Dennis damaged all 30 schools across the county. Here at Milton High School, the storm destroyed several buildings, including this computer lab where more than 100 computers got soaked. Some of the worst damage was here at Pace High School. Dennis ripped off more than half the school's roof. Santa Rosa County students aren't the only ones getting ready to head back to class. Students in neighboring Escambia Columbia County, Florida, go back on Tuesday tomorrow. Kids in Baldwin County have a little longer. They head back the following Tuesday, August 9th. And if your children go to school in Mobile County, they head back on August 15th. After suffering through two hurricanes in 10 months, Navarre Beach needs rebuilding in a bad way. Now that process could begin weeks sooner than originally planned. Renourishment of Navarre Beach could begin as early as October. Now, the plan is to add 150 feet of depth to the beaches and rebuild the dunes by up to 14 feet high with plants on them. A contractor will take sand from the Gulf and pump it back to the beach. Now, officials have their sites set on an area about four miles out in about 65 feet deep water. Well, it's now 722 on this Monday morning, and we're not talking hurricanes or anything like that today. That's right. Good weather pretty much. A uh, little, I guess that's summer pattern. That's right. It is the first day of August. Happy August, Jason. <laughs> Well, thanks. Uh, happy August to you, too, Sarah. Eric, uh, we're looking at a pattern that will bring us showers and thunderstorms. That's pretty common summertime into the afternoon. Also looking at temperatures that will be slightly below average this week because of the more abundant showers and thunderstorms around. Temperatures right now, 74 in Mobile, 76 in Pensacola. And I'll have a full look at your forecast coming up right here on Fox 10 News right after the break. Please stay with us. Before a storm. To get you up to speed. Worse of the weather yet to move in, but it's right on our doorstep. During a storm. Be aware, heavy rainfall coming down and possible hail with strong gusty winds. After a storm. Looking clear across the forecast area right now. Depend on Fox 10 News Storm Tracker at 5 and 9 p.m.
Time now 724 and the thunder showers are mostly this morning right along the beaches of the Florida Panhandle. We're glad you're with us here on Fox 10 News this morning. I'm meteorologist Jason Smith and most of the activity out there over towards Pensacola. It looks like Perdido Key getting a few showers this morning. Mobile, Fairhope, Bay Manette, Gulf Shores, not a bad start to the day. Uh, these showers will continue to stay pretty much along the coastline here. Uh, Destin and Sandestin really getting rocked this morning with persistent showers. They are not the best beach morning for you. You can see the activity coming in off the Gulf and then further on off to the west. Navarre Beach right along uh, Navarre and Santa Rosa Island there may run into some showers and another shower between Gulf Breeze and Pensacola. This has been another persistent shower right here between Gulf Breeze and Pensacola on Pensacola Bay Bridge. So Highway 98 uh, through Gulf Breeze, you run into that rain shower. By the time you get into downtown Pensacola, things dissipate. Uh, we have a stationary frontal boundary in place. That's what's been causing the showers. It settled into the area over the weekend. We saw a lot of rain here over the weekend and now looking at just uh, some scattered stuff still hanging around. Most of it's over the coastline this morning. This afternoon it will develop inland. We get about two days more with this weather pattern and then this front will wash out so much that uh, it won't really even be a player in our weather pattern anymore by midweek. It will transition more into scattered afternoon activity. Uh, a little bit less rain shower activity for the second half of the week. Quick check of the tropics, uh, starting with the Gulf of Mexico, very quiet here. Uh, very quiet in the Caribbean until we get down here towards the Eastern Caribbean Sea. One tropical wave and then another wave right in through here that we're monitoring. And here's what's happening with all of this. Uh, first, disorganized showers over the Gulf. So nothing to worry about there. The same over Cuba and the Cayman Islands. Then this little wave, we'll have to keep a close eye on it. Right now, it's not really doing a whole lot. Uh, also, out here to the north of the Turks and Caicos, this is very impressive looking on the satellite radar, but conditions aloft just not that favorable for development here. So a couple of areas of disturbed weather, but nothing that uh, shows immediate signs of becoming our next tropical storm. And the next storm, the name would be Harvey. As we look at our coastal thunderstorm forecast for this morning, most of that will be south of I-10 along Highway 98. Could start to creep in towards Dolphin Island, Mobile County, or Baldwin County later this morning, but right now, mostly a Florida panhandle thing. 84 degrees by 10 o'clock, and most of the rain holding off for the metro area of Mobile and the northern parts of our viewing area. We don't expect much rain this morning, but this afternoon, all of us seeing the thunderstorms likely across the area. It seems like just about every afternoon we have a shower here or there across the area in your neighborhood and either right on top of you or very close to you. And it looks like this afternoon will be another one of those with a high of 90 degrees. Isolated showers tonight, temperatures in the mid 70s and our four day outlook shows rain chances today and tomorrow at around 60%, a high of about 90 degrees. And then we start to see those showers taper off, rain chances around 40%, a little bit more scattered for the second half of the week on a Wednesday and Thursday. That's your Fox News four day outlook. Uh, interesting to note that highs will be a little cooler than average this week at 90 degrees versus those mid and upper 90s we saw last week. Should be a nice little break for us. Oh yeah, definitely. And this is August and the dog days of August maybe coming one day or another. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll enjoy the 90 degrees while That's we have right. them. Well, results of a new hurricane study are also out this morning. We'll tell you what could be to blame for more ferocious storms. And many folks in Alabama were ordered to evacuate during Hurricane Dennis. But how seriously did residents take that order? We'll tell you in about two minutes. You're watching Fox 10 News. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for watching Fox 10 News on this Monday morning, August 1st. I'm Eric Reynolds. And I'm Sarah Wall. Good morning, everyone. In the news this morning, scientists are calling some of the new findings on hurricanes alarming. New research shows that global warming may be making hurricanes more ferocious. And we're not talking about storms in the distant future. We're actually talking about hurricanes right now, meaning this hurricane season. The study, conducted by scientists at MIT, focused on major storms in both the Atlantic and the Pacific since the 1970s. The study showed that those storms increased in duration and intensity by about 50%. Scientists say those trends are closely linked to increases in the average ocean surface temperature, which correspond to increases in global temperatures over the same period. Now, important to note, this research does not suggest that global warming is generating more hurricanes, just stronger ones. Well, speaking of hurricanes, a new poll finds that most people on Alabama's Gulf Coast did not leave during the last hurricane. That's despite the mandatory evacuation order by Governor Bob Riley. The poll says that only 25% of people in Mobile County said that they evacuated when the order came down. 
In Baldwin County, only 45% of people surveyed said that they evacuated. Now, the poll surveyed 410 respondents from all over Mobile County. Now, only those in the Baldwin County evacuation area there took the survey. In other news this morning, the family of a local murder victim in Mobile is speaking out this morning. 31-year-old LaVirgil Smith was found dead in the Ben & Jerry's, uh, rather, Ben Social Lounge parking lot early Saturday morning. That was it, huh? <laughs> this is Shaida Smith. She still remembers her husband's last words to her. He told me, babe, I'll be back. I'm going to pay my cell phone. I love you. I said, I love you, too. LaVirgil Smith never made it home. Police say he was murdered in the Ben Social Lounge parking lot. He was shot multiple times. So far, police have not identified a suspect. If you have any information about the case, please call Mobile Police. Pritchard police have an investigation of their own this morning. They are looking for the suspect in a drive-by shooting. Investigators say 20-year-old DeAndre Williams was walking down Owen Street this weekend when someone shot him in the leg. Williams was taken to the hospital. His injury is not believed to be life-threatening. Authorities in Mobile are investigating the cause of a weekend fire. It happened at a home on Michigan Avenue near Virginia Street. Firefighters say it started on the second floor. Here's what firefighters found when they got to the scene. Flames were leaping out of the window upstairs. Apparently, the people who live here were inside the home when the blaze began. No word yet if anyone was injured. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. After spending nearly two months in Aruba, the mother of a missing teen has returned back to Alabama. Now, according to a relative, it was very difficult for Beth Holloway Twitty to leave without knowing what happened to her daughter Natalie. But she plans to return back soon. Now, in the meantime, digging at a landfill in Aruba will continue today. Officials began searching the area after a potential witness claimed that he saw some men dump and cover a female body just days after Natalie disappeared. Natalie has been missing now since May the 30th. Her family is offering a $100,000 reward for information that solves the mystery. They're also offering a $1 million reward to anyone who wants aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery or hard at work this morning. Two of them are making a spacewalk today. They are restoring a gyroscope on the International Space Station. The astronauts will also replace a failed washing machine-sized spinning wheel which, along with three other gyroscopes, will help steer the International Space Station. Also today, teams of experts could decide what to do about Discovery's problem. Two ceramic strips of fabric drooping between tiles on the shuttle's belly. Now, some engineers are worried that they could trigger overheating when the shuttle returns back to Earth. And we're taking a look at some live pictures, too, this morning. We have some really neat pictures that we can see from space. What's happening right now? Incredible shots, and uh -huh. of course, they've got uh, quite a busy day up there going on. Absolutely, some spacewalks and all kinds of neat things. Yeah. Vacationers in the Baldwin County area are choosing to stay in condos instead of hotels and motels. And we'll tell you what's driving the condo industry up in Gulf Shores. And if you have a cold and you're used to treating it with echinacea, you might need to try something else. Now, that's the results of a new study that are challenging the effectiveness of the popular cold remedy, according to some. Details when we return. And the time now, 735. We still have some showers along the immediate coastline along the Florida Panhandle. That's on your Fox News Storm Tracker radar. You can see a lot of activity over the Gulf. Not really dealing with any problems in Mobile or even in, say, Pensacola north of downtown. But uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on these showers in the Gulf. They may be working their way inland later today. We'll look at that chance and the forecast coming up on Fox 10 News. We've had a fire in our home. They're on their way. Farmers Help Point service starts getting things back to normal the moment you call. And it's free with your policy. In Mobile, call the Branion Agency for all your insurance needs. Call 633-5800. Martini's Fine Food and Spirits in downtown Mobile offers upscale dining in a casual atmosphere. Martini's features live entertainment five nights a week and recently won the Mobile Register's Reader's Choice Award, Mobile Bay Monthly's Best of the Bay, two years in a row. Come on, my daddy's restaurant. Martini's Dolphin Street, downtown Mobile. At Greer's Food Tiger, we work hard to save you money. 
Half gallon bluebell ice cream, three for ten dollars. Fresh quarter sliced pork loin, $1.69 a pound. Try shopping your nearby Greer's Food Tiger. You will be satisfied. We guarantee it. A person can't really understand what it's like to be overweight unless they've been overweight. I was 77 pounds overweight. I was miserable. With LA Weight Loss, it was exciting. I lost weight each week. I lost dress sizes left and right. Within 36 weeks, I went from a size 18 all the way down to a size 8. I decided to join the company because they changed my life, and I wanted to help other people change their lives, too. LA Weight Loss Centers, call for your free consultation, 1-800-526-SLIM. I'm David Winkles, and I invite you to use Winkles Pharmacy for your prescription and other health care needs. With more than 80 years of combined experience, our staff provides a personal service you've come to trust. We have a convenient drive through and offer free local delivery. For fast, friendly service, visit Winkles Pharmacy, your neighborhood pharmacy, on Highway 90 in Pace. You're watching Fox 10 News. Welcome back to Fox 10 News on this Monday morning. It's now 7.38. I'm Sarah Wall. More and more vacationers are looking to get more bang for their buck. That could be why the motel industry is having a tough time keeping up with condos. In the past couple of years, about half a dozen motels have closed in Gulf Shores just because of slow business. And condo owners are capitalizing. Fox 10 News reporter Q McRae has the story. It was a busy day for Myers Realty in Gulf Shores. Tourists kept filing in and out of the office. And for one reason, condos. Sarah Kuzma says this is the busiest time of the year. Checking in, we have quite a large number of people that we're accommodating. Nice. We're excited about that. Kuzma says condos are quickly becoming the number one choice for vacationers. Tony Story is one of those people. She just got her key and is about to settle in for a week's vacation with her family. I'm excited now that we're here. No more driving. Now, condos are known for being a little pricey, but Mrs. Kuzma says that in some cases, condos are actually cheaper than hotel rooms and are more convenient. So with a condominium, you have a living area and the kitchen facilities, and so it really makes it economical. The kitchen was a huge selling point for Story. With three teenagers, we don't have to run in and out uh, to restaurants a lot. Uh, my kids really like my cooking. And the Story family is staying in a house this week, but there are condo apartments for lease. They've stayed in hotels in the past, but they've decided condos are more accommodating. Hotels are somewhat like apartments. You don't have the privacy. You're having to go through the lobby all the time when you're getting ready to uh, go out to eat or do whatever you want to. So it's just the privacy. In Gulf Shores, Q McRae, Fox 10 News. In 2004, the average cost of a motel room in Gulf Shores was about $100 a night. The average cost of a condo, $115. A pair of chickens in Baldwin County have tested positive for two mosquito-borne illnesses. The Baldwin County Health Department says that a chicken in Orange Beach is infected with the eastern equine encephalitis. And a bird from a flock in Spanish Fort has West Nile. Now, the two infected birds are actually doing their job. They're sentinel chickens. The Health Department uses the birds to monitor for West Nile and Tripoli. So far this year, two people in our area have been infected with Tripoli. E. An elderly man from the Flomathan area died after contracting the disease. An elderly Fairhope woman was also infected. There are no human cases of West Nile so far this year. Time now, 740. Fox 10 News Storm Tracker radar looking okay this morning for Mobile, Bay Minette, Citronelle, Milton. Even Pensacola looks all right until you head across 98 on the Bay Bridge and get in towards Gulf Breeze. One isolated shower there. Uh, we're seeing some showers offshore mainly this morning, but in some cases, they're making an impact right along the beach. Uh, Navarre Beach and out towards Santa Rosa Island seeing some rain. Destin and Fort Walton Beach seeing some showers and thunderstorms and a lot of rain over towards Sandestin this morning. None of this showing any real sign of moving out of here anytime soon. Uh, getting here a little bit tighter on the Florida Panhandle and we'll, we'll zoom in on the street level here and get a little bit uh, better idea of what's happening. First in Pensacola, you can see right there on Bay Bridge between Pensacola and Gulf Breeze over Pensacola Bay, a persistent shower. It's sinking towards Gulf Breeze right now, but it is holding together so you could continue to get some showers there. Navarre looks wet. Uh, we're seeing showers there for sure and again no sign of this moving out of here anytime soon and a lot of rain only two or three miles offshore that's wandering its way inland and then from Destin eastward over towards uh, looks like Walton County 
in San Destin, not a great beach morning. Uh, here's Destin proper right here. Uh, Full on beach right on the edge. It's not really raining much up towards Niceville, but at times we've seen some showers even over towards Shalimar. So that's what's happening on our storm tracker radar. We're monitoring showers, mainly a coastal thing this morning. Later on today, all of this will work its way inland. And we'll see those rain chances beginning to really go up after the noontime hour for our inland areas to 60%. The heat wave is a thing of the past. As we look at our forecast highs today, around 90 degrees for Mobile, 86 for Birmingham. Uh, a little bit hotter here back in towards Arkansas and up into the Mid-South. But we're seeing unsettled weather in our section of the country. So highs around 90 degrees for us. And uh, the rain shower is helping us out, even though we're seeing the rain around and it's a little gray outside at times. Uh, at least they're not seeing as much rain around. Coastal thunderstorms this morning. Thunderstorms likely even in the inland areas this afternoon. Rain chance increasing to 60%. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Isolated showers tonight. Temperatures in the mid-70s. A light south wind out there. Our four-day outlook shows rain chances on the higher end of things today. Tomorrow, then the second half of the week, Wednesday and Thursday. Rain chances down to around 40%, highest near 90 degrees. Uh, coming up, we'll look at the seven-day outlook and also have another look at the tropics. That's coming up later on on Fox 10 News. Sarah, Eric? All right, thanks very much, Jason. Our summertime pattern continues. It's now 743 on this Monday morning. Summer colds are no fun at all. And if you turn to echinacea for help to beat colds, new research says it may not help. Echinacea is one of the most popular medicinal herbs. It's sold over the counter in pills, drops, and lozenges. A new study funded by the National Institutes of Health exposed patients to a cold virus. It found that there was no difference in infection rates between those who took echinacea or a placebo. Respected proponents of natural alternatives like Betty Lou Pierce say previous testing has proven just the opposite. It cleanses the blood as well as the lymphatic system and is very thorough with it. So in the research that has been done with echinacea, the only time that has been ineffective is when it's used in very small doses. So this made me wonder, you know, just how much they were using and how often. Pierce and others say this is not a definitive test because the extract was prepared in a lab and not sold in stores. She says echinacea should not be dismissed as a cold remedy. Natural products are tested by independent labs. Many like echinacea have been on the market and used successfully for hundreds of years. Well, summer is over for some local students. Kids in Santa Rosa County, Florida are heading back to school today. The starting on time is a pretty big accomplishment. That's because Hurricane Dennis damaged all 30 schools across the county. At Milton High School, Dennis damaged several buildings, including this computer lab, where more than 100 computers got soaked. Some of the worst damage was here at Pace High School, where Dennis ripped off more than half of the school's roof. All in all, it was a pretty short summer for students in Santa Rosa County. They had to go to school all the way through June because of Hurricane Ivan. The Santa Rosa County students aren't the only ones getting ready to head back to class. Students in neighboring Escambia County will go back tomorrow. Kids in Baldwin County have a little longer. They'll head back to school the following Tuesday on August the 9th. Now, if your children go to school in Mobile County, they head back on August the 15th. As we just said, a new school year will soon be underway in Mobile County. And thanks to your generosity, hundreds of foster children will have the supplies they need to get the semester off to a good start. Now, many of you took part in the Stuff the Bus campaign at Toys R Us this weekend. The large school bus parked outside was literally stuffed with donated items, including new uniforms, educational toys, and a lot of lots of school supplies. Now, it's estimated that more than 600 children are living in foster homes in Mobile County. Some Baldwin County parents are armed this morning with an important tool that could save their child's life. It's called the DNA Life Print Kit. East Bay Kia and Daphne handed them out this weekend. The kits are designed to get vital information to law enforcement officials quickly if your child ever turns up missing. Daphne Police Sergeant Robert Snyder says each kit includes a journal, a digital photograph, a super video CD, and a home DNA identification kit. What we're trying to do with the identification kits in case a kid is lost, we have some type of way to, to find them if we locate that kid by DNA sample photos and just medical records and things and things like that. So it's, it's something that we hope you never have to use, but if you do, we will have that information. It is recommended that you update the kit every six months. And again, you hope you never have to use something like this, but good to have the information if you ever do. Definitely. 
Well, if you have to be out on the roads this morning, stick around for just a bit. The local traffic report is on the way. We'll tell you if there are any areas you need to avoid during your morning commute. And folks in Arizona are cleaning up this morning after a dust storm leaves a huge mess there. It's now 747. If you're heading out at 8 a.m. this morning, you've got 13 minutes to get out the door on time. Here's a live look at Interstate 10 in downtown Mobile near the Virginia Street exit. Here's your camera from the Alabama Department of Transportation. You see things looking real good at this hour. More news in two minutes. It's 74 degrees outside. We'll be right back. When you come to the pharmacy, you might be looking for me. Know why? I'm a pharmacy technician with a degree from Virginia College. I assist with patient consultations, medical records, and I make sure we have your medicine ready when you need it. In other words, I look out for you. If you like what I do, call Virginia College in Pensacola and get the latest news about a career in pharmacy technology. Virginia College, it's on Garden Street. Chinatown is now open in our new location at Highway 90 next to Lowe's. We feature dim sum traditional Chinese food, and we have over 130 items in our buffet, including a Mongolian grill. We cater for all occasions, and our party room is perfect for company functions and birthday parties. Chinatown, Mobile. new 2006 Mitsubishi Eclipse at a dealer near you today. Mitsubishi, driven to thrill. Your bills can't be paid and collectors harass you with threats of lawsuits? You fear losing your home, automobile, and everything you own? There is help for you. Call 4Debtor to learn more. Also, with Altel, you get unlimited calls between your wireless and home phone. That's so wonderful. It's just a little unexpected. <laughs> when Altel gives you unlimited calls between your wireless and home phone, what's not to love? <laughs> These are soft. Welcome back to Fox News. It's now 7.49 on this Monday morning. I'm Eric Reynolds. Scary moments for some drivers in Florida when a wreck causes a massive pileup on a major interstate. Take a look. The officials say that 16 cars were involved in an accident on Interstate 75 near Ocala. That's just west of Daytona Beach, Florida. Now, as you can see, many of the cars were pretty banged up. Fortunately, though, no injuries have been reported. Meantime, a dust storm is whipping up quite a mess in Phoenix. The storm was so strong it caused three boats to capsize. Nobody was injured, but the National Weather Service did issue a wind warning for the city's airport. Dust storms are popular during the summer. They carry wind speeds as high as 50 miles per hour. In other news from across America this morning, a pilot in Colorado loses control of a single-engine plane while a bus carrying a church youth group crashes into a pickup truck. Meantime, the state of Florida auctions off tons of unclaimed property. Plus, it's the All-American Soapbox Derby in Ohio. Lori Dew has these stories as she takes us across America. Colorado. A single-engine plane crashes in Grand Junction, killing the pilot. He was practicing takeoffs and landings when he radioed the control tower to say he'd lost power just two miles from the runway. No one else was on board. The NTSB is investigating. Arkansas, a pickup truck collides with a bus carrying a church youth group just north of the Louisiana border. It happened near the scene of a fatal crash between a bus and a car two weeks ago. This time, no one died, but both drivers and 29 passengers were taken to area hospitals. Police are investigating who was at fault. Florida, the state auctioning off abandoned items from bank safety deposit boxes. The government did its best to find the rightful owners, but plenty of stuff was unclaimed. There's everything from stocks and bonds to jewelry and even some coins from a Spanish ship that sank in 1622. Ohio, it's the All-American Soapbox Derby. Hundreds of racers aged 9 to 16 competed in Akron. For the first time in the Derby's 68-year history, the winners in all three divisions were from Ohio. 
They've got bragging rights and thousands of dollars in scholarship money. And that's the Fox Watch across America. A beekeeper in Texas uses an unlikely assistant to get rid of some bees in Houston. Check this out. The beekeeper used a stuffed animal to attract several thousand bees out of the home. As you can see, the bees really took to the stuffed sidekick, and after catching the bees, the beekeeper cleaned up the mess that the bees left behind and headed out to other bee exterminations. Well, they really liked that stuffed animal, didn't they? No kidding. That's kind of interesting. That <laughs> you got to know what you're doing to do that kind of stuff and to know Ooh, that that would work. And dressed properly. Yeah, Boy. no kidding. <laughs> Absolutely. Got to dress properly for today for the heat, but not as hot as it has been. Oh, a nice start for an August 1st, Jason. Really, it is. Uh, temperatures actually a little below average today. Uh, they were that way yesterday as well. The showers have kept our temperatures down. Here's where the showers are right now, mostly along the Florida Panhandle and right along the beaches. Pensacola Beach, Gulf Breeze, Navarre, Perdido Key, and Destin seeing the rain out there. I have a full look at your forecast coming up on Fox 10 News. For insurance and financial services in Mobile, see State Farm agent Tommy Breedlove. Hello, Gulf Coast. Let me tell you about Northwest Pensacola's hidden secret, the Newmarket Steakhouse and Seafood Grill. We serve delicious appetizers, succulent seafood dishes, and hand-cut steaks, including the biggest ribeye in town. With one of the top happy hours around, our relaxed atmosphere lets you choose your attitude and simply enjoy the food as much as we do. Newmarket Steakhouse and Seafood Grill. Back to school means back to cool with a great new cut and style from Fantastic Sam's. Whether your hair is short and spiky or sleek and shiny, Fantastic Sam's got the do for you at a price that won't cut into your budget. Remember, cut, permed, or styled. When your hair looks good, you feel great, even on the first day of school. Fantastic Sam's, gotta be the hair. After 33 years, American Carps is happy to announce Pensacola, the grand opening of our new factory flooring design center. The largest of its kind, sponsored by Mohawk Shaw and Bowie Carpet Mills. Because American Carps is the factory distributor of famous name brand ceramic tile and hardwood floors and has millions of square feet in stock, you're guaranteed to get the best selection of carpet, wood, tile, and area rugs at the absolute lowest prices. Come celebrate American Carpets' grand opening today in Mobile, Pensacola, and Gulf Shores. We're open 8 to 8, so don't be late. This year, staying beautiful can take a thousand lipstick applications, a dozen manicures, and several haircuts. But there's one beauty treatment you only have to do once. Imagine a dental plan that's a one-time beauty routine. New Crest White Strips Premium Plus. Get whiter teeth with just one kit. Keep them whiter for 18 months. Just once and you're done. New Crest White Strips Premium Plus. Part of the Crest Dental Plan for healthy, beautiful smiles for life. Fox 10 News is brought to you in part by Cellular South. Thanks for watching Fox News. It's now 7.55 on this Monday morning. I'm Eric Reynolds. And I'm Sarah Wall. Let's get the latest on traffic conditions outside for you this morning. And we'll check in now with WABB's Cherish Lombard. Good morning, Cherish. Good morning again, Sarah. Eric, right now we're taking a live look at the downtown Mobile area. This is the entrance to the Wallace Tunnel. You can see on your screen traffic is moving very smoothly in and out of the tunnel. Now, that accident I mentioned earlier in Daphne on Highway 98 has been cleaned, cleaned up, so that is good news. However, we do have an accident in Gulf Shores. County Road 6, four miles west of Highway 59. Be careful at that location. Also, keep in mind, if you're headed to the Pensacola area, there is a lot of rain and Pensacola Gulf breeze. So keep that in mind. Slow down and be very careful. I'm Cherish Lombard from WABB for Fox 10 News. Time now, 7.55, you're watching Fox 10 News, and right now in the Mobile area, we're looking at 74 degrees, 75 right now in Pensacola, winds out of the northeast there in Mobile, a little land breeze set up there. Uh, not really a bad morning at all. We have some sunshine in Mobile. Watch out around Pensacola, we do have some showers popping in there on our storm tracker. Right around Gulf Breeze, between Pensacola and Gulf Breeze there on Pensacola Bay Bridge. Some showers this morning. Perdido Key, uh, some rain showers right near your area. And also some rain showers out here on Santa Rosa Island near Navarre. And also near Destin, some rain showers. But back off towards Mobile and in Baldwin County, we are looking clear this morning. No significant areas of precipitation out there to cause you any issues on the roadways. Highway 43, Highway 45, looking pretty good. Now let's check out what's going on here along the Florida Panhandle, especially in the 
Pensacola area because we do have some rain showers that are causing some issues out there. As we get tight here, you can see in Gulf Breeze and Navarre, uh, light rain showers. This has been a very persistent rain shower right here on top of Gulf Breeze. It doesn't show any signs of getting out of here anytime soon. Eventually it should weaken. Navarre, uh, you didn't see the rain earlier this morning, but now it's starting to creep in towards Navarre and there along 98, also through Santa Rosa Sound and out on Santa Rosa Island. A lot more thunder and lightning out over the Gulf uh, this morning. The focus for the showers and thunderstorms is this stationary frontal boundary. It was a cold front. It slept into the area on Friday, and then it's been hanging around since Saturday and Sunday. We've been seeing the rain showers around because of that front hanging on in. Well, this front is still going to be parked over area, but gradually it's going to wash out. About two more days of a persistent, moist, and unstable air mass because of that front, and then it should kick on out of here as high pressure builds in. So as the week goes on, we'll see the rain chances increasing. Before we get into that, though, I want to look at the tropics out there. It's kind of a busy map, lots of clouds out there, but nothing really that well organized. Here's the United States. There's the front that stalled out right in through there. The Gulf looking pretty good. Uh, some showers down the Caribbean Sea, but nothing organized there. And then right here in the Eastern Caribbean, we do have one tropical wave we'll monitor for some development over the next day or two. If necessary, the Air Force may send in a reconnaissance aircraft to investigate this later today. Same goes for this area of disturbed weather too, but uh, neither of which are looking very promising right now for development, and that's good. Uh, as we're looking at the Turks and Caicos Islands and the Bahamas off of that, we have this is uh, tropical disturbance interacting with an upper level low, so it's not going to develop into anything anytime soon, we don't think, but it is very impressive on the satellite imagery. This wave does have a little bit more potential, and then this may become a subtropical storm out near the Azores, but it's way too far north and way too far east for us to worry about. This morning, coastal thunderstorms, temperatures around 84 degrees by 10 o'clock and uh, starting to warm up. The shower chances are generally south of I-10 this morning, but you can see a few isolated showers inland. It looks like you get a pretty decent morning in, though, before the rain moves in this afternoon. Thunderstorms likely this afternoon, rain chance at 60%, a temperature right around 90 degrees for our daytime high today, so it will be a little toasty into the afternoon, but not too bad for the first day of August. A typical high for this time of the year is around 92, so 90 is not too bad. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Our four-day outlook shows rain chances decreasing by Wednesday and Thursday and expanding that out in the seven-day planner. At, at, by the end of the week, more in the realm of high pressure building in, temperatures back into the lower 90s for highs and a little bit less of a rain chance. And as we look at that uh, rain chance today, mostly an afternoon thing, same thing tomorrow. You may get a decent day off in the morning, except right on the beaches, but the afternoon uh, does look okay. And highs uh, near 90, a little bit warmer by the end of the week. Overnight lows consistently in the mid 70s. So this is the summertime thing this week. Uh, thing that we need to note is that uh, a little bit better chance of rain than average today, tomorrow. Okay, so be aware of that. Grab that umbrella as you get set to head out. We're trying to enjoy the August month now. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us here on this Monday morning. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow morning starting at 5 a.m.